we're going to create an arrangement in Sibelius for Woodwind Quartet. And we're going to do this by importing a music XML file of a Bach chorale. So let's go here and select Import, and then select Music XML File. And when we'll locate our file, I just happen to have one on the desktop. All right, and so when you see it, then this would go ahead and import it exactly as it is, and you wouldn't have to worry too much about it. But you can also deselect these. Since I want this to be a woodwind quartet, I know that what the instruments I want. I can go in and create that score and have them imported directly into the woodwind quartet. As you can see, it was originally soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So we'll click OK and let it import. And there we have our score. Sibelius has done a pretty nice job of importing this. Uh, but oddly enough, it put the clarinet in the bass clef, so we should probably go ahead and fix that first. Um, we'll select the clef tool, so, so click on our treble clef, and just put it there. So now that solves that. Um, uh, the other obvious issue is, is that we have some notes that are out of range on the oboe, and you can see that uh, they're marked in red. Uh, and generally, the tessitura of this is a little too low, particularly for the top three instruments. So I think maybe what we should do is just go ahead and transpose it. Now, in order to, to transpose it and to change the key at the same time, we can do that by holding down the command key when we, when we click on our, on our measure. Now, if you single click, you just get one measure. If you double click, you'll get the line, the system. And if you triple click, you get the whole thing. Okay. We can use a shortcut for transpose. Transpose could be found under node input, but we can use oops, there we go. But we can use the shortcut command T. And then we'll select transpose by key. And I'd like to take this up. Let's go ahead and take it up to G minor. And then we'll click we'll allow the transpose key signatures, change key at um, I, I don't really need double flats and double sharps, I think, for this, so we'll get rid of that and we'll say OK. OK, and so now you can see we have no notes that are out of range and everything looks pretty good. Um, but the only thing I don't particularly care for is um, the range of the bassoon here, so we might look at that here. It's a little bit too high, I think, for the, for the elementary type of uh, ensemble I would be doing this for. I would like to format it, though, so that um, I don't have these repeated measures. You can see from here to here, and then from here to here, are almost identical. Uh, now, in box time, because this is a, has a pickup, you would just put the repeat in the middle of the measure right here after this fermata. Uh, but the modern convention is to use first and second endings, so let's go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to click on Actually, I'm going to command click on this measure. And I want to delete three of them. So we'll go ahead and select those. And then we'll just go ahead and delete them. Now, when I do this, Sibelius does a lot of its formatting. And, and so I'm going to probably want to change that fairly soon. Let's go ahead and put in our bar lines, though, first. All right, we're going to grab the first bar line and then click and create a start repeat. And then at the end of this one, I'm going to click, and I'm going to have an end repeat. But of course, if I don't put in the endings, I'm going to have one extra measure, and we don't necessarily want that. Now, I've got four, it looks like 12, about 12 measures plus this pickup here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and take care of the formatting now. It seems to work better for me in Sibelius. So I'm going to go to the Layout menu. I've got the, I already have this one selected, and I'm just going to enter a system break there. And then I really actually don't, but now I ended up with five measures here and three, and I'm not quite exactly sure why. So I'm just going to select those measures, and I'm going to then tell it to make it into a system. And so now the layout just a little bit better. Um, you'll find that certain entries in Sibelius just work better when you do it this way. Now I want to enter in my first and second endings. And uh, once again, I'm going to click the bar line where I want the first ending to start. And then I'm going to press the type L for the, for the line tool. And we'll click first ending. 
And it puts it in there, and we can go ahead and drag that out a little bit. Okay. I'm also going to click that note, and then I'm going to click L there too, because there really was no bar line to put it in, and then we'll drag that out. And so we're looking pretty good now. And so in the next part, we'll be adding our dynamics, articulation, and phrasing, and some of the uh, text and elements that need to be entered also.